Ministries. Forces of Nature is out right now, and we've got three titles in that. We've got Natural Selection, Second Nature, and Better Nature. Hey, Elizabeth. Hello. How are you tonight? I'm fine, thanks. So this is what we're up on the two-year anniversary for the series. Is that where you've been with this lately? Yeah. And you have your third book in the series that just came out. Can you tell us about a little bit about the first and second, and then tell us what the third book is? Well, the series starts out with a, I want to say, 14-year-old girl. Without the book right here, I can't swear to that. But um, it's just before her birthday, so it kind of messes me up sometimes. But anyway, she has got the body of a 10-year-old. She has not gone through puberty at all. She is the youngest child, and she feels she's completely unremarkable compared to her siblings. And then through the course of the book, she... Uh, becomes aware that murders are happening to, and they start getting closer and closer to her. And she has to solve the murders all while finding out that she's not human wow. and neither is her family. Does the rest of her family know this? Yes. Everyone is kind of in the know except for her because uh, the species that she is is called Gaia, which is basically the Greek goddess of the earth was one of their race. In fact, a lot of the Greek gods are actually members of their particular race. But uh, they, uh, her mom doesn't want her to know because they had a child killed. Because there's a lot of tension and prejudice in the other world, which is all these supernatural creatures. Her siblings are actually adopted demons that the mother had adopted to protect the child. Okay. And in this world, there's a lot of hatred towards demons. They're considered to be evil, and they're not necessarily evil. It's in the way they were brought up, and I kind of proved that by her two siblings aren't bad. So um, at the end of the first book, they, of course, find uh, they confront the murderer, and they wind up having to leave their home because they've been exposed. And the humans can't know about the other world or the enforcers, which are the people who protect this world, would be in, come involved. So they just leave their home and they go on the run for a while and they finally settle in Greensboro, North Carolina, right before the first book. So they're living under an assumed name, which a little inside information here, the name Sterling that they live under when they're on the run was actually the original name from the original characters because this is kind of a resurrected story from high school. But, oh, that you wrote when you were in high school? Yes. So you've been working on this for two or three years then? Uh, yeah, just a few. <laughs> just a few. That's cool. <laughs> so what made you decide to put this out as a book? What made this story stay with you all this time, do you think? Well, it was the characters, really, that family dynamic of the two adopted children and the one natural child and just the relationship that they have. Uh, because I'm the youngest of nine kids. Wow. And they're all very, except for one, they're all quite a bit older than me. Okay. And so they weren't really around growing up. And I always dreamt about that close relationship with my siblings. And that's kind of what this story was for me. I was playing with that relationship with siblings. You and I have a lot in common. I was the only child, so I wrote about five sets of twins in Click. <laughs> I, you know, I think as you know, a writer, you always want to spend time in a life that you don't necessarily have yourself. Even if right. you don't know, that's the joy of that, right? Yes. So, how does your character? How does your main character age? You know, in the second book and to now, to the newest book. Well, because of everything she goes through, and she kind of gets a lot thrown at her in a fairly short period of time. Everything she goes through kind of grows her, and she fills. She kind of fills into herself. Of course, she physically fills in very quickly in the first book, but as, over the course of the series, like you start to see the one of her traits. She runs away when things get tough. She just cuts out and runs, literally. Mm -hmm. And you start to see that go away, and the pouty, insolent, poor me attitude kind of goes away, and she just really grows. And then, of course. Uh, because she is a nature spirit, she's unable to eat anything unnatural. She's unable to wear anything unnatural. She can't even sit on a fake couch. Oh, that's really cool. I like <laughs> that detail. Did you read um, the April and Pike books, uh, Wings, the fairy books? Uh, no, I haven't. There's the character, like, she only eats lettuce and drinks Sprite because she's a fairy. And I just remember reading that and going, okay, yeah, I'm buying that. Like, okay, I can kind of see that being fairy food. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I love the idea of a nature spirit, you know, only being able to touch and eat natural things. That really resonates for me. So yeah. are you a nature lover? Are you an animal lover? What do you think drove you to this subject matter? Oh, well, the funniest part about it is, I, I mean, I've always liked the outdoors. I like to hike and stuff like that, but I also am kind of on the, a little on the lazy side, so I don't get out as much as I should, and um, it wasn't a natural like for me with nature, but through the course of the book, I have gotten into it, and I'm a lot more aware of just nature and my favorite thing to do now is actually to find those hidden th bits of nature in the middle of the city. I'm so with you. We were at a water park the other day with my kids and there was a, a wasp's nest, which you don't really want in a water park like right under the kitty slide board, right. the kitty sliding board, but there was a wasp, two wasps were working together trying to drag a locust into their nest. Oh. <laughs> I must have sat there and watched them for like 15 minutes. <laughs> But I was really fascinated, like you are, you know, just this incredibly dramatic demonstration of the natural world in the middle of this very, very heavy-handed created one. Right. Yeah. So and tell me about the third book. It sounds like this came along at a pretty busy personal time for you. Yeah, when when I actually released, there had been a death in the family, and so I wasn't able to really focus on the book at the time, and I really feel like I sh uh, it should have gotten more attention because, first off, I have used beta readers to make sure this book can be read on its own. It oh, makes cool. sense if you just jump into this one. And then it is just, so far, it is my favorite thing that I've written. I just love the characters. I love the dynamics. I love the evolution of the relationships because you're really starting to see them go from being children's relationships to being adult relationships. Interesting. So how old are your characters now in this book? How old is the main character? Uh, the main character is 18 by the last book. Okay. So have you, do you still categorize this as, I mean you've almost gone from middle grade to YA to NA if you're going to be talking about different age yeah. categories. Have you considered that at all? or? I've always felt that my book didn't really fit into any real age categories because, I mean, she goes from being basically a 14-year-old body to being about a mid-20-year-old body. Within and that's because of, of what she is and who she is and how right. she grows individually. Right. And because of that, it's always defied being defined, I guess. Um, so... Yeah, I, I honestly would say definitely the third book is in a, it even, it, it's my first sex scene that I actually have published. Whoa. Um, but it, it gets a little heavy, but the first book, yeah, well, that's definitely why. I, I just no doubt in my mind that's why. The second book, it's kind of toe in the line, and then, yeah, third book, definitely in a. So what do you want readers, is this your last book in the series? Do you have more plans? This is it for the series. I will write in what I'm going to call the otherworldly novels. Oh, cool. So I'm going to start with some of the familiar characters from this series. There, a couple of them are going to get their own, and then we're going to branch out from there. But it's such a cool world that I just kind of want to live there a little while longer. I understand. I actually think that's great. I think it, it's the best of both worlds, excuse the pun, because... <laughs> You get to sort of complete a storyline where sometimes that last book feels a little like work, right? Because you want to do something new. Yes. Play. You yes, to play. I definitely had that problem writing it because it was I, I wanted to move on. I wanted to do something different. But at the same time, I wanted to finish one series before I moved on. So Right. I'm, I'm actually, I've been there. I'm there right now a little bit with <laughs> something new that a lot of people have some interest in, but I can't quite spend time there because you want to yeah. make sure that you have, you know, a solid body of work, especially, you know, I'm in the middle of my first series, just like, this was your first series. Yeah. So, what's your, what kind of stuff do you have planned on a release schedule? Do you know yet when you might? Um, my next book will be out October 15th. It's called oh. Supernova. Cool. And it's actually dealing with Faye. Faith? Yes. Faye. F-A-E. Ah, okay. So it's a different world or is it part of this one? It's a different world. Basically all the supernaturals in this the book that's coming out are all fey. Kind of okay. like Lost Girl if you've ever watched it. No, I haven't. Okay. Basically just everything supernatural, we take some of the legends that we do know and tie it into that. 
Oh, that's really cool. And is it YAMA? Uh, it's, YA. it's YA. Yeah. So was that fun to do then, a little bit of a break from the Forces of Nature series? Oh, it was actually a blast. The main character is a Lakota Sioux, which is something I've been fascinated with since I was 13 years old. So I've wanted to get into that. And I owe huge props to Christina Sir Kelly because she she is uh, Cherokee, I believe, and she has given me a lot of tips on just the having that heritage, what how it would affect you in everyday life and things like that. So um, I, I finally got to explore that, and then on top of it, I got to uh, these characters are they're going to be superheroes basically. Cool. You've and got a couple big trends going at the same time. You have sort of a Native American character and a superhero. I see a lot of requests for both of those storylines coming up. Yeah. So um, the superheroes are kind of cool because actually my two best friends and I, a couple years ago after we watched the movie Kick-Ass, <laughs> yeah. we created our own superheroes. And their costumes are my character's costumes. Oh, so I love I that. And they're actual, we like created our own backstories and stuff, and I incorporated as much of that as I could into the story. So this year for Halloween, we're all going to dress up, and I'm going to actually use those pictures as promotional stuff. Oh, that's going to be so fun. I thought so. Yeah, so you, that's going to be a big departure for you then. Are you excited about the differences? Do you feel like there's completely different things to talk about? <sighs> Yes and no. I mean, it's still a uh, urban fantasy paranormal kind of story, but at the same time, yeah, it's completely different. But there's still a lot of the same elements because she is Lakota. The main character is Lakota, so there's still that somewhat tied to the earth. She's also uh, she's oh, what do I call it? Star Star Dancer is the name of what she is. Obviously, I made up my own stuff with this one a lot, right. but um, she gets powers from the stars quite literally. That is so cool. I can't wait to look at that. <laughs> so um, because of that, of course, I did do, deal, eh, deal a lot with uh, Lakota Legends. Really cool. kind of cool. So I'm still kind of playing in that same little pocket, but it's kind of a different part of the pocket, I guess. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think that there's a lot of similarities between the Native American Legends and the Greek gods and goddesses, and in a strange way, they all come from the same place. Everybody's trying to explain why we're here. Right. But uh, I think that sounds really fascinating. I can see the parallels in those two projects, for sure. Yeah. Even though they sound different. So, um, basically, I just am really excited to talk with anybody else who's really inspired by the different things around them and nature. Do you find yourself talking about the natural side of your projects a lot, or do people focus more on the romance and the character involvement and that type of thing? Um, as far as people, I I get kind of a mixed bag. For me, I really foc my biggest focus has been more the natural versus man-made. So, like, I, I've had a huge push in my own household to more natural foods. Um, I've gone organic in a lot of my products. Um, I just I try to take the chemicals out as much as I can because I mean it's in our air, it's in the water we drink, it's in the dirt, so it's in the vegetables. Even organic vegetables have some chemicals in them. So I try to take them out where I can. Yeah, that was that's a big I'm not as good at home about that as I can be, but you know I, I'm pretty I'm still pretty bad about it, even knowing what I know now. Right. I I still sometimes it's just easier, especially I live in a town that's like a hundred thousand people. We don't have a Whole Foods, we don't have a Trader Joe's. We have one little grocery store called uh, Naturally Yours, which has some stuff to it. So that's kind of where I get what I get. But we don't have a good selection of organic stuff around here, so it's kind of hard to find. You know, so, I think you can get some like big snack packs off of Amazon. I've done that before if it's helpful, like for stuff for school and like. I don't know. I'm not so great at it myself, but I have given up, you know, like I, I grew up in Baltimore, so it's like big crab town down there, like uh. eat a lot of seafood, and I have really given up for the most part. I used to eat sushi like, you know, two and three times a week, and I, <laughs> I, I can't, you know, like you start doing this research and you realize, you know, the damage that can be done, in my case, to dolphins from, you know, big tuna fishing, and then you start to realize like, 
the kind of murky soup that we're all swimming in from the water and how much mercury is in fish and I really, you know, my parents are really disappointed that I won't eat crabs. <laughs> I won't eat crabs this year and I didn't eat them last year and I'm not really sure that I'm going to go there again. So, yeah. It it can be it's good to it's good to learn what's going on about there out there, but yeah. Yeah, that one wouldn't be a problem for me. I'm allergic, so. Oh, well, there you go. So, shellfish is not for you. Yeah. But for me, I mean, it was a pretty big part of I can of imagine. Life. So For me, uh, the hard, th the thing I've done best with is I gave up soda. That's cool. That's I have recently. Yeah. I've recently started. I've got a soda stream, and they, oh, have, cool. a, they have a naturals line, um, and they have a delicious apple mango. <laughs> yeah. So like I'm that. drinking that, but other yeah. than that, I don't really drink soda. You anymore. know what I heard, and I, I, I haven't had enough of it to drink it, but um, kombucha tea people I know use to replace soda with a lot because it's got like that natural effervescence and it's got caffeine <laughs> and it does have a little bit of sugar because it requires um, sugar and yeast essentially. Yeah. Something like that. I don't. I don't know a lot about it. I wrote an article about it once, but I still don't really understand. But I know that a lot of the people that I talked to said they sort of got, you know, almost addicted to it because it was a replacement for soda because it's got yeah. caffeine. And I can see that. I try. That's like one of those things I try a little bit. I figure every little bit that you can do is helpful. Yeah. Anywhere you can get yourself off of that stuff because, I mean, it's not good for us. It's not good for anybody. It's not uh -uh. good for how we're made or what we're making or what we're putting back into the to the earth. Exactly. Well, I don't want to keep you for too long tonight. I'm really glad that we got a chance to chat. And I'm so excited to read your next book when it comes out in October. And I'm still getting through this series, but I'm really enjoying it so far. And I just, the subject matter is really close to my heart. So I was really excited that we were going to get a chance to talk as part of your blog tour. Well, I'm very glad to be here. And I really hope you do enjoy the series. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. See you later. I'm going to I'm going to hang us up right now. Okay. Reconnect with you on the other end. Okay.